And of course, the reason you're all here tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about this. 64 years ago, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police were formed in Paul's native land of Canada. As a tribute to that momentous day tonight, in the hallway of the sixth floor of the RCA building in Midtown Manhattan, NYNY, <laughs> the great dog sled race. You and I tonight, Paul, Billy in the hallway, dog sled racing. I know, we are gonna sled down, actually dog That's right. sled down the thing. This the is uh, what uh, the good Lord meant television to be, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, hi, folks. Okay, this is what we were talking about. 64 years ago in Canada, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police were formed, and in honor of that anniversary tonight, we're having the great dog sled race right out here in the hall on the sixth floor at NBC. And uh, as soon as Paul comes out, uh, we'll get the festivities going. I want you to meet uh, two gentlemen who brought the teams in. Uh, this man is Bob Bartolucci. Uh, this is Charlie Schroeder. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation and, and bringing these guys in. Uh, they are members of the Long Island Sled Dog Racing Association. First of all, Bob, what does a sled dog racing association do with itself? Well, we promote dog sledding. We have a membership of about 50 people. Uh -huh. And we train and race sled dogs on Long Island. And uh, how far does a race go? What, what is the Any distance? distance from three to eight miles. And what kind of dogs do we have here tonight? We have Alaskan Huskies, which you see here, and we have some Siberian Huskies on the other team. And uh, any other dogs participate in this kind of thing? Basically, these are the two breeds. You do get Malamutes that participate also. Now, I've, I've noticed something all afternoon in the hallway. These guys smell bad. <laughs> is, is that the way dogs ought to smell when they're racing, or is it...? That's from all the sweat from all the hard miles. <laughs> but dogs don't sweat, do they? On their pads. They do actually sweat? Okay. Uh, are they nice dogs? They're gentle and pussycats. And uh, there'd be no, no problem, Charlie, with these guys? No. And is this going to be tough for Paul and I to master racing these guys? It'll be a little rough, but if you hold on tight, you'll be all right. Okay. What, what do we have to understand about this? What is the command to get things going? The command to start is hike. 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 Have hike. you ever ridden Starts one of these? Them up. Hike starts them. Up, way up in the north. No, I never did. No, he never did. <laughs> and, and how do you get him to stop? To stop, you just say, ho, and hit the brake. Ho, ho, and hit the brake. But we don't actually say that part of it, do we? You just say ho. You just say ho, and then we and actually, actually, hit, actually the hit the brake. Okay, how many dogs will be on a team? You'll have four dogs for each team. Okay, uh, can you pick a favorite just by knowing how the dogs are divided up, or are they pretty evenly matched? Well, I go with Minstrel right here. This is Minstrel right, right. here. Hi, Minstrel, how are you? And whose team, uh, who has Minstrel on, on that? Yeah, is, is Minstrel? I think David has Minstrel. Ah, oh, well, okay. <laughs> there you go. But nonetheless, I'm sure I'll have a, uh, just an equivalent. Now, now, there is uh, a weight difference. I am a little lighter than you. Yeah, so we, we've evened that up. We've given uh, Paul the handicap of, what do we have over there? 50 pounds of beaver pelts. That'll definitely even make us even. We got those out on 6th Avenue. They're available here in New York most any time so of the year. So you are, how... how you're 50 pounds heavier than I am? Well, I guess. But we're going to even it. What do you weigh? 140. Well, I weigh 175. So how many pounds is that? Well, that would be 35 pounds. Well, let's take a few of these out there. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no actually, <laughs> no. It doesn't work that way. Uh, and we're going to race up and down the hall. How fast will these guys get going Well, I say you go between 15 and 20 miles an hour. All right. Uh, anything else we ought to know about this? Hold on tight. Okay. What is, what is the length of this? I would say you're going about 50 yards. 50 yards. Okay, so it's uh, pretty much a dash event. Uh, and to Paul, all of the action-packed minutes, uh, moments of the competition, NBC's own Mr. Bob Costas. Bob, how yes. are you tonight? I'm fine, but naturally filled with trepidation as anyone would be at the prospect oh, of being involved in something like this. You're telling me. Now, uh, have you ever covered a dog a sled racing event? I, I have not, but I'm told that conditions for an event like this are all but ideal today. Oh, that's good. Subarctic temperatures, howling winds, and as you can see, a fresh dusting of snow <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> this man's been under hypnosis. <laughs> now, uh, Bob, can you, in a couple of words, uh, describe the feeling out here on the sixth floor? Well, the atmosphere is tense. It, it's one of breath anticipation and looking at these huskies I'd say they're every bit as eager as we are all right uh, Bob is gonna call the race from the finish line I'm heading there now all right Bob uh, good luck to you Paul uh, Bob I think you need this Thanks. Oh. Uh, now uh, Paul and I are gonna go down there with the dogs and the sleds we'll get ready if I left anything out here okay we're all set ladies and gentlemen we're moments away from the greatest spectacle in racing uh, we're gonna pause for a commercial 
and the great dog sled race will begin. Come on back. This is Bob Pastors back in New York, and I see we have just about reached the traditional pause up at the other end of the hallway. That means we are moments away from the start of the race. Briefly, these are the rules which govern all international dog sled competitions. Each competitor, in this case David and Paul, must start with one foot on the slide, side runner of the sled, another foot on the brake. Once the brake has been released, they can use the free foot to push off the ground for propulsion. And the winner, of course, is the first sled across the yellow ribbon marking the finish line in front of me. One last precaution which has been taken. The man you see behind me is licensed paramedic Al Frisch. And Al is standing by with comforting blankets in the event that any of the competitors should suffer from exposure. We are just about ready to get it underway. Let's throw it to our own Jimmy Fitzgerald, who is manning the starting gun. Jimmy, are you ready? All right, then. On your mark. Get set. Go! Hike! 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 And they break quickly with the starting gun. And the addition of the beaver clubs apparently has given Fitzgerald. And the was the early favorite in the better line. Handicapped by the additional weight has fallen behind. And David Letterman, surging to the finish line, is an easy winner over Paul Schaefer. Nice job, guys. But no cigar. What was it, Paul? Was it the pelt weighed you down? Where did I go around? Ho, ho, hey, ho. ho. <laughs> the dogs are now on the, on the elevator oh. looking for a cab. Well, uh, this is how the Bolivian soccer riots usually start. Is everybody all right? Oh, oh. boy, that was exciting. Uh, a disappointed loser, but first, as is customary, we speak to the winner. Huddled here against the chill. Dave, can you single out? A turning point in the race. Um, I, I think Paul uh, had it accurately uh, when he announced earlier that uh, I may have had the stronger lead dog. It certainly felt that way to me, especially coming out of that dangerous shoot. You know, a couple of years ago we lost some Norwegians down there. <laughs> and <laughs> with any big building in the city. And we all remember that with with a great deal of sorrow. We Dave, do. this has to be satisfying because of. Some of the wise remarks that Paul made during the week about what was likely to happen, I guess you've shut him up now. Yeah, pretty much, uh, and, and I think we're ready for the, uh, the Nationals. Now, let's, are we going to take a look at this uh, excitement, Bob? Oh, I think we should. Okay. I think we should. All right. Oh, yeah. Now, this is, uh, the one in the front is Minstrel, I believe, the, uh, the guy on the right side of the screen. And we were doing about 60 right there. <laughs> this is the, the most frightening part of the course. Uh, they stretched this yellow line across the uh, yes. end there. And you see, I actually had to start breaking even before I crossed the finish line. It was just an unbelievable moment in sports. And it looks to me like Paul, is Paul even on the same floor? Can you see? <laughs> well, let's, let's talk to him here. Paul, it seemed like Dave grabbed the lead. Oh, my. <laughs> well, uh -uh. These, these are the things which happen on live television, ladies and gentlemen. And, and assignment four. Uh, we'll just take this, uh... <laughs> well, we really... <laughs> well, I really can't follow that. There's a little something really for the maintenance department, ladies and gentlemen. Really said, really. It seemed as if... I think my team is expressing really how we all felt uh, <laughs> and how we did, and uh, I'm a little f***ed <laughs> up myself, really. Uh... Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A fitting tribute to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police on this, the 64th anniversary of their founding. We must continue with Late Night, although I realize it will all be anticlimactic after this. An and I think so, we absolutely. Every week. Absolutely. Uh, uh, thank you very much. You are welcome, David. Tough luck to you, Paul. Well, hey, you know, I don't know.